Hey, what's up? Like, totally time for 90210. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the 90210 Show. My name is Mark. And with me is my girlfriend, Carol. How are you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up? Did you forget my name? No. Are uh, you sure? Yeah, I didn't forget your name. We've had a good week here. It's <laughs> July 11th, 1997. The reason I hesitated is because I normally say with me as always is my girlfriend, Carol. But I don't know if I can say with me as always anymore oh. because last episode, you of the regular show, you were not here. I was not. I'm you sorry, were everybody. feeling ill. And I, I was so sick. I had to get a, uh, a last second fill in. Yeah, thank goodness for my little niece. Yeah. Little Miss Bella. Yeah, you should listen to the episode. I will. I did watch the horrible movie. I just didn't get to talk about it. A horrible? Not a horrible. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. It's the... We watched Men in Black. It's the beige of movies. Right. Yeah. It was a little boring, but... Yeah. But we are here not to talk about Willard Smith and Thomas Leonard Jonas and their movie. We're right. Still, we're here to talk about 90210. And, Wait. To be, and to be distracted by a cat. I'm not being distracted just because I'm looking at the cute kitty. It doesn't yeah. mean that I'm distracted you by the cute kitty. You know what would help is if you were engaged with me during <laughs> this. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to look anywhere else. I'll look right at you. Speaking of engaged. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you want to start with this episode? Well, since she went there, we'll start there. Earthquake weather. Yes. There That's was an called. earthquake. But... I think it pretty much started here anyway. Yeah. But uh, Dylan and uh, Noxima girl. Yeah. Whose name is Rebecca Gayhart, by the way. <laughs> I got her name right every step of the way, and you're like, no, no. <laughs> her name's Antonia. Because her character's name is Antonia. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, they're just chilling on the couch. Mm-hmm. and Talking about what they're where they're going to live in Hawaii. Yeah, like... No big deal. He's leaving the show, right? He has to be. And uh, he's like, I'm thinking about getting married. Because she says, he's talking about how he wants to build a house. Right. And rent a place nearby while they build a house. He's not going to be doing this work. Right, of course. He'll be hiring it done. But... She's like, oh, it's a big commitment. And he's like, well, you know, it's not the only commitment I was thinking about making. Yeah. So he's like, I've been thinking about getting married. And she's like, oh, to anybody special? And <laughs> yeah, there, it's it's really weird. Yeah. And then uh, he's like, I just, I don't know if she'd say yes. She's like, I guess you don't know unless you ask her. Right. Which doesn't sound like no. Right. For sure. But then he's just like, marry me. Yeah. It was the worst proposal ever. <laughs> How are they going to tell their kids this story? He didn't even look at her. No. You just sit next to her staring off into space and like basically looking at the camera, which she, is weird. She's reading a magazine. Yeah, and he's just like, Marry me. She's like He's uh, looking at the camera so that he's talking to every teenage girl. In <laughs> <laughs> and she's just like, uh, that didn't sound like a question and you weren't on your knees. So he got on his knees and said, I love you. <laughs> and then she got on her knees. Oh Jesus. Yeah. He said, I love you. Will you marry me? And she said, yes. Yeah. They've known each other a whole two episodes. It's been more than that. Hey, I don't, they haven't known each other long. It hasn't been long. I mean, you said you think it's probably been like a month. Yeah, we've been dating for quite a while, the entirety of this show. Yeah. And we're not married yet. That's true. Anyway. Maybe one day, Carol. Maybe. This show's been quite a commitment. <laughs> but I've been thinking about making it a commitment. <laughs> Have you now? <laughs> but I don't know because one time this girl said that we, you know, we wouldn't get married. <laughs> yeah, when you were in high school. Remember way back then. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's ridiculous that Dylan did such a bad job proposing and didn't even have a ring. He's a no. millionaire. Yeah. If you're going to propose, buy a ring. Yeah, this was to borrow Brandon's. (laughs) Right? This was to spur of the moment. 
Yeah. Yeah, it was like an impulse, I guess. But yeah. like, I don't know. An impulse marriage. Don't. It's do like you... when you pick up a pack of gum at the uh, aisle of a grocery store. Yes. Just pick up a Noxzema girl. So then Bruno calls. Like, are they just BFFs? Like, why is he calling her all the time? Oh, he's always calling her. Watching her make out. It's weird. He wishes that he was still in. Um, Rubbing Noxzema on his body. <laughs> But she tell she tells him, and he says her dad's out of town. He'll be back tomorrow. And she's like, "Okay, I'm gonna tell him tomorrow." Uh-huh. And of course, like Bruno fucking told her dad, right? Like she had to know that was gonna happen, though. Um, and they well, go. She acts kind of surprised. I guess she's just naive. She does seem like a naive little girl, Absolutely. doesn't she? Absolutely. Yeah. But um, they go to tell her dad. Mm-hmm. Bruno is there her dad looks upset already and he's like yeah i already know and it's a good thing he told me so i could get over the shock right so i can formulate a plan <laughs> and they're like Are, uh, we want your blessing mm-hmm. like what the hell i don't understand any of this no this guy orchestrated the death of dylan's dad yeah she knows that now i don't i don't get why she wants to be around him. Why she wants his blessing. She ran away from him to go with Dylan. Yeah. I don't get any of this. Yeah, I kind of thought that was going to be the end of their, you know, relationship, but I guess not. Yeah. So he says to Dylan, what would you do if you were me? He's like, I'm not you. He's probably thinking because I'm not a fucking murderer. Right. He thought he was going to be, though. Yeah. He gives her a little Bible and says your mother carried this down the aisle at our wedding. Is that a thing? I've never heard of anybody carrying a Bible down the aisle. I don't know. I guess maybe it is, but uh, what what happened to her mom? Yeah, she's obviously dead. Did uh, Jack McKay kill her? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> that would that would actually... That Make would be, some sense. Yeah. Be something. I still think her dad's a psychopath no matter what. Absolutely. He stands there and he's like, yeah, okay, fine. You know, here's my tacit blessing. Right. And then after they leave, he's like, uh, says to one of his goons, we got everything set up. I want him fucking dead. Yeah. Yeah. He's evil as fuck. So yeah, he's going to kill Dylan now. Do you think, do you think that's how he's going to leave the show? No, I don't think he's going to die. I think they'll attempt to kill him, but I don't know. I think the dad's going to die. That'd be good. Do you think that he's really going to leave? Or do you think it's all just talk? No, I think he's really gone. I think he's really leaving the show. God, that's so weird and upsetting, and I don't like it. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> His character doesn't interact with the rest of the cast anymore, like, ever. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, him and uh, Noxima Girl. <laughs> they have their own show now. Right. They stop by uh, where everybody's hanging out to tell them that they're getting married, but that's it. That's the only time they're with oh, everybody yeah. else. Yeah, yeah they, came and told, they came and told everyone that they're getting married, and then Callie looked like she wanted to fucking vomit. Oh, yeah. She, she corners him, too, and she's like, how could you just casually tell everybody like that? Didn't you think of my feelings? Like, first of all... If he's considering your feelings above his fiance, then there's a problem. So good for him that he didn't. Right. There's a problem with her and her relationship, obviously. Well, I mean, there is a problem. Like, they're not even really together, are they? I mean, like. They are. They're kissing and hanging out and stuff. Yeah. Surviving earthquakes together. I guess. He says, uh, so she says to him, yeah, soulmates, whatever. Yeah. She brings up the where was where was Noxima girl in, in uh, your past lives? Yeah, that was funny. He's like, I don't know. Maybe she was there. Maybe she wasn't. Maybe it was real. She wasn't. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. But he's like, maybe we get more than one love or true love in our life or whatever soulmates. Yeah, doesn't seem seems to contradict the term, but right. But, I mean, whatever. Okay, he's going to leave. He's going to marry an axima girl. They'll have weird, big-eyed, <laughs> large forehead big babies. foreheaded babies. <laughs> Wait, it's the, it's the inception of a- the aliens. <laughs> and tiny mouth. Don't forget her tiny mouth. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's good for Dylan, though. What? He's got a tiny dick. 
Alleg- okay. Allegedly. What? <laughs> Where are you getting your information? <laughs> I can't reveal my sources. <coughs> Brenda. <coughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. So, yeah, so that happened. Um, there- <laughs> so that happened. <laughs> There is an earthquake. The episode is called Earthquake Weather, and they're talk. There's stupid DJ radio people. Yeah, and the fact that the writers call this out doesn't make it any better. Is there? Are they? So this might be something that we're just not aware of. Is there like a a local radio pair that they are in Los Angeles that they don't like that they're specifically making fun of? Oh, maybe because that would that's make sense. the only thing that would make sense as to how they present this. Because in the background of this episode in several different scenes is this, you know, people are listening to the radio and this DJ pair, a man and a woman, and she's like, oh, I'll tell you, it's it's earthquake weather because, you know, every time we have an earthquake, it's hot or whatever. And they have an earthquake and he's like, well, earthquake weather doesn't exist. And they, they're like, they have this banter back and forth, essentially repeat that five times and that's right. every scene with them. Yeah. At one point, Brian Austin Green, David turns off the radio and he's like, gosh, how many times can you say the same thing? And I'm like, yeah, exactly. But, but you calling that out doesn't make it any better in the episode. Yeah, it was just annoying. Just hang a lampshade on it. But that's why I think like maybe there's some local, like maybe some local DJs gave bad reviews or something like <laughs> that to 90210 and they're like, oh, we'll fucking rinse them. Maybe. I guess that would make sense. But it's a big earthquake. It's a 6.4. Yeah. So, I don't know. We've, we've had earthquakes here in Michigan. I mean, uh, not like that. Rarely. In, Usually it's more like we can feel them all the way from there when they're big. Not from California. Yes. No. Yes. Are you insane? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we don't feel the earthquakes from California. When? They don't reverberate across the entire country, <laughs> Carol. Maybe it wasn't in California, but there was a big Correct. earthquake somewhere not here. And I was laying on my bed reading, and I thought my cat jumped up on the bed. Like, I felt just this little jiggle. And the cat wasn't there. I was like, hmm, that's weird. And then my friend Heather called me like a minute later. She's like, did you feel that? It was an earthquake. Let me ask you a question. Did any objects fall on your head? No. That <laughs> would explain <laughs> what's going on. Okay, can, I, can I show something? That, <laughs> all right, theater of the mind, everyone. I'm holding up my hand. Do you know how Michigan is shaped like a mitten like that? Do you know that? I do know that because I live here. Yeah. Right here. Right at, at your wrist. At the very bottom. The suicide point, yes. Where Ohio... <laughs> that's what I'm going to start calling Ohio. <laughs> Drive straight across to Ohio <laughs> to kill yourself. <laughs> across it just to get attention. Um... But right here, there's a fault line. Okay. There's a big, big, big fault line. It's actually bigger than the one in California. Really? It's just very stable. Huh. So when we get occasional earthquakes, that's where it comes from. That's what you're thinking of, where you can feel it a long way away. But it's not from California. That's not a long way away. It's That's pretty long geographically to feel an earthquake like a thousand well it's not a thousand miles like, Jeez, yeah no it's like maybe a hundred yeah that. like a hundred 150 miles away that's that's pretty it's pretty significant all right anyway i have never experienced an earthquake like this show portrayed this earthquake okay. so and that would be pretty traumatizing oh you mean with the extras uh shaking the walls <laughs> <laughs> so throughout the beginning of the episode it's weird. Claire's all horny for Steve. Oh, yeah. And well, they had sex once. She got herself an injection of Steve, and apparently that's habit forming. Yeah, it's weird. Like, she was kind of like, oh, I wanted to be nice and romantic and all standoffish, and now she's just like, fuck me, fuck me now. Mm-hmm. And it's nice to see her acting like herself. Right. I don't know why she wasn't acting like herself before. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> He's playing pinball. Yeah. Earthshaker. Because they have a pinball machine in their in their house. Why yeah. not? Yeah, whatever. But he's being really rude to her. Do you think he's being really rude? Yeah. He's ignoring her and she's coming on him. That's pretty rude. I Don't you think? 
I know you're not familiar with that happening, but <laughs> ignoring a woman who's coming on to you—that's rude. All right. Um, but yeah, so he's trying to get some kind of record and stuff, and we're watching him play this machine. It's very entertaining television. And then the earthquake hits. No. <laughs> what? We're watching him play this machine, and then she hits it with her hip. Well, yeah, she did that too. And it says tilt. And she goes, if you want the, uh, you know, the earth to, you want to feel the earth shake, hang hang out with me or whatever. And she walks upstairs. But he doesn't. He just goes back to play. He says he's so weak. But yeah, then he doesn't go upstairs with her. I, I don't know. What does he think? He's weak because he didn't smack her for messing up his game? Like, what? what the fuck? I don't know. But when the earthquake hits, we're watching him play, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden the machine says tilt, 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 and you know it's it's the actual earthquake, and, and it's then they, so they focus on the word earth shaker, like yeah, we we got it. It's so funny to me though that these people who John live... Madden comes on, draws a circle around the word earth shaker, <laughs> puts some arrows pointing <laughs> to him. Now what you got here, folks? This is an earthquake. What's going on? <laughs> we understand. It's just weird to me to see these people who live in California who are supposed to know what to do about earthquakes Mm -hmm. scrambling around like they have no idea what to do. Right. There's a couple transplants. Colin is from New York and Valerie is from Minnesota slash Buffalo. Yeah. But But yeah, everyone else should know what's going on. Steve, Claire. I mean, Brandon, I guess, is also technically a transplant, but he's been there so long. Yeah. But... Like, eventually they make their way into the door frames, but it's like they're just kind of dancing around. Right. (laughs) Yeah, it's like they're playing a game of, uh, you know, stumble around until it's time to hit your mark. Um, But even I, not from California, and and like you said, had not really experienced an earthquakes that, as they're portrayed on this episode, am like, get in the doorway. Right. Fools. (laughs) Which eventually is what they do. And everyone's great. Like every guy's grabbed onto a girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, poor Kelly. Va- poor Valerie's uh, um, famous egg salad. Egg salad is ruined. <laughs> that sounds so gross. By the way, she was putting relish in egg salad. That does not sound okay to me no, at all. No, well, you do what, not what combine is, that. What is a relish in egg salad? I don't understand that. No, no, no. It just shouldn't happen. I mean, like tuna salad, sure. Not egg sure. salad. Yeah. I, I, celery. Maybe. Celery and egg salad. I'd rather just have the egg, mustard, mayonnaise. Oh, trust me. I'm well, I'm not a big fan of egg salad anyway. I like potato salad better. But, yeah, I mean, I, 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 that's the way I prefer it. But I understand that people will do celery and sometimes carrots and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, um, Kelly and Colin are together in his studio, Mm -hmm. which, by the way, the ceiling is made of glass. And the whole time I'm thinking that the ceiling has got to fall down. It doesn't. It seems like that wouldn't be a thing in California. Right? But they also don't even make their way into a door frame. They're just clutching each other in the middle of the floor, in the middle of the room. Like, what are you doing? That big metal thing. It's like... eh. One of those things, I, what do they call it, like a hood or something like that? It looks like uh, one of those things that sits over a stove. Like a big metal thing to catch the smoke, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. But I don't know what, what the point of his was. So, Brandon and Keats. Yeah, Susan. Are... They said her name, so I now remembered <laughs> it. They're away at some, like, hotel. There's a reason, like a retreat or I don't know. Yeah, they're doing some kind of news report or something like that, but they get to hang out and yeah. Kate strips off her clothes and she's got what I guess is a bathing suit underneath it. You know, this is another instance of, of men rejecting women who are horny for them, and I just don't understand why this is happening. Like, What are you talking about? He was trying to get her in bed, I thought. No, she was trying to get him in bed. Oh. She was like, no, because... She she was like, oh, you know, let's just like stay in the room, like being all flirty. And he's like, oh no, we're going to the pool. I'm going in the bathroom to put my suit on right now. We're going to the pool. Mm, oh, okay. Because he wanted to make sure they got in the pool before they have sex. Like I don't understand. 
And so then, yeah, they, they went to the pool. They're going back up to the room, presumably to have sex. Yeah, and we would, you would think. <laughs> they get in the elevator with a pregnant woman, and that's who's, when... Who's already had sex. Right. <laughs> and that's when the earthquake hits for them. Right. So they and get they, trapped in this fucking elevator with well, this lady. Well, the pregnant woman. And of course, because of course this would happen, because how could it not? Mm-hmm. She goes into labor. Her water breaks. And she's like, I don't want to alarm you guys, but, you know, with my first child, it came real fast. <laughs> she's like, and this time, I, you know, I had sex with Satan, so <laughs> be prepared for an anti-grace birth. Oh. Those are faster than normal. I don't, I wonder, like, it seems like there always has to be somebody kind of, like, catching the baby and helping the baby come out and stuff. Yeah. Like, what happens if a lady's all by herself? The baby just flies out. <laughs> <laughs> so, from what I understand, and the guy kind of talks him through it too, talks Brandon through it. It's nice to see Brandon bring a life into the world when he's taken so many lives out of the world. Right, right. But he's so the head comes out, and then you got to kind of like reach in and turn the shoulders a little bit because the shoulders are like a you know the like the widest part. Right. Just to kind of like, you know, turn a little bit so they can get out. And then once the shoulders are clear, it comes right out. But it's fast because it's all slick and stuff like that. So I guess it would just fall on the ground. I mean, it's not like I don't think that would kill a baby or anything like that. Not usually. Unless you would was, hope not. Unless you were standing up. Maybe in the old days, women did it in water. I don't know. The whole thing is just gross. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> Birth. Yeah. But yeah, so so they get to uh, help this lady, you know, have a baby, and it's all very you that's know, their storyline, whatever, touching and stuff. And then that's yeah, okay. And then Keats is, at one point she's crying for her husband, which is it was sad. sad. Yeah, they were being really like selfish and rude at first. Like him and Keats are like whispering to each other about how much it sucks for them. Right. She's fucking in labor, and yeah, that she starts crying about her husband. It's like oh, and they're like oh, gee, yeah, I guess we should like help her, right? <laughs> assholes <laughs> and then too when she's like i can't do this he's like if i can do this you can do this fuck you yeah. let's cut your penis off <laughs> and see how you feel about doing anything i was gonna say you're not you're not giving birth Brent. right not the same <laughs> oh my goodness so okay so that's their whole storyline really yeah the uh, baby gets born it's a boy it's fine she names him brandon <laughs> And it's it's a repeat of the Say by the Bell episode where Mr. Belding's wife Becky gets uh, that uh, Zach has to help her give birth when the their elevator gets stuck. I think it's an earthquake too. I think it's the same fucking exact storyline. Do they name the baby Zach? They yeah they named well they named the baby something to do with Zach. I think. Hmm. Um, Donna is not in town for the earthquake because Donna is in Pasadena. Yeah, we're still doing this thing that they come back to periodically where Donna is trying to become the the Rose Bowl princess. princess. Whatever, yeah. So prior to this, Ray stopped by in the morning at their little apartment or whatever. That's kind of how the episode opens. And yeah. it's like every fucking episode it needs to open with Ray and us just groaning like, get this fucker off the show. Yeah, like... He knocks and uh, Claire opens the door and he just walks right in. Like, the, like I'd be like, get the fuck out immediately. Like, he has no business in their house. Yeah. But he I says. I don't care if he did play a young Al Calavici on Quantum Leap. <laughs> he says that he has started therapy and that his therapist has asked um, if for Donna to come with him. Yeah. She wants to talk to her. So she agrees, which, what the fuck, Donna? Grow a pair. Yeah, I don't think it's a good idea. And there's no way that the therapist would ask for that. It doesn't seem so. Because it's putting her in a bad situation. Right. So, yeah. So first she's going to the Rose Bowl. Then she's going to go to therapy with him. Uh Uh-huh. At the Rose Bowl thing, she has her final interview. And she's looking at the old pictures. And she sees a picture of her mother in the 1969 photograph of the Rose Bowl finalists or whatever right yeah. or were they even finalists last I don't know. year uh well they were the, i don't think they were finalists but it was like the maybe the final like 25 or something like that it was a big picture yeah 
So, yeah, she sees that her mom was in there, even though all we know so far is that her mom didn't want her to do it. It's very clearly her mom's fi- picture pasted on, uh, like, somebody else's body. Right. And um, then she goes to therapy with Ray. Yeah. And the therapist asks to speak to her alone and says, now, Ray's really, like, unpredictable right now. and Kind of like that earthquake we just had. Right. So, and he can hurt you, too. <laughs> just, you know. So be, if you're hanging out with him, stand in a doorway. <laughs> She's like, just, you know, be careful. And I would suggest you don't continue to see him. Well, then why did you ask her to come there? Exactly. <laughs> Your point. Like, yeah, that's why a therapist wouldn't do that. Oh, and at the Rose Bowl thing, too, she brought up that, like, he hit her when she was talking to the judges. Yeah, that's part of how she became a finalist. I I don't. What? That was because the the question that she was they were asked the question, how would you make sure children's hopes and dreams come true? <laughs> and somehow she fucking got off on a tangent when she talked about her being hit. Yeah, but that's the thing that cinches it for her. She's, she's one of the finalists. Yeah. So, I don't know if that was, I mean, I guess it worked out for her, but it seemed kind of like, I I, I don't know, it seemed kind of like. Yeah, if I was judging the Rose Bowl parade thing, I'd be like, mm, I don't know. Yeah. I don't want this girl talking about being hit. It doesn't really fit with the Rose Bowl theme. No. No, because, well, I mean, football players are hitting each other, but. But then at therapy, too, the therapist is talking about, like, how well, wait Ray. A sec- wait a second now. What, what, what? Quarterback's there. What? The quarterback is there. Uh huh. At, at the Rose Bowl parade thing, where she's did, in Pasadena. Yeah, and she tells him that she's got to go to therapy, and he's like, Ugh. "Yeah," which, of course, I wouldn't even be dating her. I'd be done. Yeah. He he's like, "Well, you got to do what you got to do, and I got to do what I got to do." And I'm like, "Good, walk away, walk away, man." And he kissed her instead, and I'm like, mm, "He's that's not even stupid. getting laid. It just seems way seems, too much effort." Yeah, I agree. But um, real high maintenance. <laughs> at therapy, this therapist is like kind of trying to make her feel sorry for him. Yeah. I don't like it. She's like talking oh. about how he got hit a lot when he was a kid, which I thought it was more that his mom was getting beat. I didn't realize he was also getting beat, but I guess his dad just beat up everybody, whatever. Like, I think it was probably equally, if not more so damaging that he watched his mom get hit. Yeah. Agreed. Either way, that whole thing's weird. And then at the end of the episode, mm-hmm. she's with quarterback dude. Yeah. Walking up to her house. And there's fucking Ray. Does he live in their bushes? <laughs> Apparently. Because he's always there. Yeah, it's annoying. He has uh, taken it upon himself to board up their broken window. Yeah, the and- only thing that got hurt in the earthquake at their apartment was the window got cracked. So, um creepy much like i think he expected her to be grateful yeah expected her to give him a blowjob <laughs> and she's like get out of here what are you doing here go yeah. away i made it clear i don't want to hang out with you and the quarterback's like yeah get the fuck out of here he's like well, who's talking to you and then he fucking throws the hammer through the other window that wasn't broken the, i think it's a door like the glass door or whatever yeah he's like, fix it yourself then yeah and then she's just and then the quarterback's like, okay, I'm going to take you uh, back to right. the other Let's house that you were at. House. <laughs> Which makes sense, because now, you know, her house is not secure. She can't even keep him out. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? The guy's acting like a baby. They should call the police. I would call the police. Wouldn't well, that's you? that's like, probably what's going to end up having to happen. Yeah. Ray has become a pariah in this <laughs> show. But, I mean, he broke the window. Like, that's not okay. No. Like, and the quarterback was going to go after him, too. She's like, no, no, just Mm -hmm. let him go. But, yeah, that's what's going on with them. And then she tries to talk to her mom about the Rose Bowl picture. Right. And her mom is, like, adamant that she was never there. Like, she doesn't know what you're talking about. about. Fucking idiot. Like, it's so bizarre. And then she kind of, like, leaves... And the husband comes back in. And she goes, she found the, the picture. Yeah, we're going to have to tell her. He's like, oh, we're going to have to talk to her about it. I don't want to. She's an adult. She deserves to know. And she's like, I, but it'll ruin this for her or something like that. It, yeah, we you don't, know, how will it make her feel? We don't know what it is, what it is though. I, I have a suspicion 
that she got like raped, raped by or by the entire football team. No, one I of th- the judges. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. One of the judges did something to her. All right, we'll see. Possible. And I think that's really the whole episode, isn't it? No, I always forget something. What am I forgetting? What about Valerie and David? Oh yeah, yeah yeah. So he really really wants to get laid. <laughs> yep. It seems to be a problem for him, like being with women who won't sleep with him. Yeah, exactly. Like, what is it about David? <laughs> well, usually I have sex with anyone, Valerie says, but not just when I look at you, my, my vagina just dries up. I don't know why. <laughs> but it's she, weird. But she tells him, okay, just wait till tonight. Mm-hmm. And then there's an earthquake and everybody descends on this house that she right. lives in. So they have no privacy. I guess they didn't do it. No, they just slept next to each other. Whatever. Says. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't understand if this thing is going to become a thing or what. I don't know. It's, it's weird. It's weird. Claire and Valerie, both slutty, both decided to not be slutty going into the relationships they're currently in. Mm-hmm. It's weird. But now Valerie's, you know, having sex. Yeah, they do. Steve and her, and her do have sex. Yeah, eventually they do. Yeah. So good for her. She gets laid. She's the only one. No, yeah, well, Brandon probably does. Oh too. yeah, you're right. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but he probably does. You're right. He, probably he, did. he just gave birth to a baby. Right. <laughs> I don't think that that would put anyone in the mood, honestly. You don't think so? Well, she didn't have to see it. <laughs> he did, though. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So, okay, so you can write us. At latefee1994 at AOL.com. Mm-hmm. Check out our website at www.retroleapfee.com. Yep. And tell your friends. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.